y'all welcome back to my channel chilling with londa and today i have another story time i'm excited to tell this story i think it's going to be a little fun but before i get into it if you're new here go ahead and subscribe to my channel leave a comment down below and go ahead and like my video of course that's going to help me grow and i would really appreciate it let's go ahead and get into this story time this story took place some years back like most of my stories i'm telling um i was in my rebellious years I was going through some things so let's just jump into where i want to begin uh, i was standing in a hotel i wasn't staying there long term y'all i was kicked out of my dad house you know going through some things so i'm gonna just jump into it i was standing to this hotel and i was only there for like <laughs> four days maybe five days tops i wasn't there very long at all but I was going through some things with my dad and I was unable to stay there at the time. And you might ask why didn't I go with other family? Well, sometimes other family homes is not available and that's what the case was. So I had to take my butt and I stayed in a hotel for maybe four or five days. It felt like forever, but it was only four or five days. Um, in that time I was at the hotel, of course I was working, but when I got off work and I would go into the room, I would be bored. So. I downloaded the uh, app. I don't, I do remember the name of the app, but I'm not going to tell y'all because that's too much details, but I had an app. And so I would go in there and I would, you know, chat with people or whatnot. And I met this guy and we just going to call him Tebby. So um, I'm on the app and one night I'm just in a hotel room, I'm bored and I met Tebby. So he, we were riding, he, you know, he seemed cool or whatever, seemed down to earth, seemed pretty normal because most of the people on the app at that time, they were kind of weird. Either everybody was just trying to meet up and do you know what, or they just, you know, they just was straight out weird. So he was one of those people that was messaging me and he seemed kind of normal. So I went ahead and we chatted for a little bit, a couple hours actually. We were on the phone for a couple hours and it got to the questions of like where you're located what you know and we both were located in the same town and so he asked me where was i staying and i told him where i was what um which hotel i was and what my life was like at the time because you know i didn't have nowhere to go so i was at this hotel room and he was like well you know what you know me and my cousins we actually stay in that hotel too for now because um he was supposed to be getting an apartment but it was not ready just yet so and his cousins and him, they were staying in that same hotel, coincidentally. Or was it he was staying there? No, he said because they were staying in the hotels, since I'm at this hotel, his cousins and him, they would come to this hotel. I agreed because he seemed normal and I was pretty much bored. My other, my homegirl actually stayed a couple rooms from me. She was going through some things as well. So uh, we would go down in the lobby and we would talk and, you know, chill or whatever, me and her. But she wasn't available at that time, so... I'm like, cool, I can hang with Tevi and his cousin. No big deal. Um, they eventually, a couple hours later, they come to the hotel. Don't ask me why. <laughs> because he said he already had a hotel room in a hotel. So, you know, I'm like, cool, or whatever. I don't really want to go in a hotel room with these guys. I would feel more comfortable them coming to my room. So that's what it was. Um, he was pretty cool. So Tevi, let me describe Tevi. Tevi was maybe like 6'2", six 6'3", six he was dark skin. he had little dreads in his head, and um, he was Bahamian, yeah, he was Bahamian, so that's how he looked, and he had a slight accent, it was pretty nice, or whatever, his cousins, he had two cousins with him, we're gonna call them uh, Dante, and we're gonna call the other one um, Chris, so it was Tebby, Dante, and Chris. When they come in the room, Tebby uh, gives me a hug. Everything was cool. He seemed pretty nice. Smelled good. Was clean. Uh, following behind him was his two cousins. And Dante was more like a... He had a heavy accent, like a Bahamian accent, but he was pretty cool as well. He didn't give off aggressive or anything like that. And then behind him, Chris, was the light-skinned one. Um, he was more heavy set, red skin. He also had dreads, but he was he was the youngest one out of the three, and he was more, like, playful. Um, so, yeah, that's how I would describe those three. And 
we sat in the room, we played cards, we drunk Hennessy, we, we smoked a little bit, we all had fun. Uh, we had the music going, nobody was weird, nobody tried anything, none of that. We laughed, we, we played cards, like I said, we had a good time. Eventually, me and Teppy, we started taking a liking to each other within a day or two. Uh, we were in the hallway, you know, <laughs> talking late night where everybody was in the room, sleep, we were kissing a little bit, you know what I mean? Um, so, we took a liking to each other pretty fast. And so he would like he was like my apartment's supposed to be ready in maybe another two weeks or whatever and you're more than welcome to come to my place if you not and into you know a stable shelter in two weeks and I thought about it I didn't know him so I didn't give him an answer at that time but I did think about it because I was planning on going back to my dad's house you know eventually time went on. I didn't give him any answer on that, but time went on, like a couple days, you know, um, he actually paid for my hotel room for like three days for me while I was there. That was very nice um, because we didn't stay in the same room. His cousins and him had one room and I had my own room and he would pay for my hotel room for a couple nights. That was pretty cool at that time. So I thought, so the whole demeanor, his whole demeanor was very uh, relaxed. He was a very quiet man but he was very funny at the same time he when I say quiet like when we were like in public because we went places um he didn't speak much but when we were all in the hotel room we, we became like a family really um he was very funny loud you know just himself um I felt very safe around them his cousins were the same they were very funny all of them were very funny and they pretty much took a, a liking to me and they became like protective over me we like I said we became like a family um, so we're going to fast forward maybe to like, I said I stayed there like four or five days. He said his apartment wasn't ready for two weeks, but after I stayed there for five days, I did end up going to a cousin house and I stayed there for maybe a week and a half or so like that. Um, so now let's get to the part where the action comes in. Okay, so like a week and a half passed by and I'm at my cousin's house. Um, that didn't work out too much because I was just there. I was supposed to be there temporarily, not to just stay there permanently. I was supposed to be there temporary, not permanently. So after a week and a half, uh, Tebby and his cousin's department came through. I guess everything was ready. One day he called me up and he asked me, you know, what's up, baby? You know, you got you a place yet or you back with your dad? And I told him the situation. I'm like, no. Um, so he pulls up. I get my things and he called my name and I get in the car with them and we roll out. So that's the day that I decided to stupidly move with Tevi and his cousins into an apartment after I've known them for maybe two weeks. Uh, because why? I was no excuse just going through things in life and just going through the motions y'all i've learned a lot of lessons i'm a wise young lady now but let's let's continue with the story he um he picks me up and we go to this apartment um mind you a couple of days before that i i was aware um that his apartment was ready because he was talking to me about um the maintenance guys they they wanted him to pick out his carpet colors um which he only had two choices but they wanted him to pick out his carpet colors so I kind of already knew that department was getting ready. We get to his, we get to the apartment. Um, that day it was pretty exciting. I'm not gonna lie because I was just, you know, just, um, just tired of going through, just standing in that room, just trying to figure out how I'm gonna pay for every single night, just being worried. You know what I mean? Luckily, I met them and. Things fell through how it did, and we all, you know, planned to stay in this one apartment together. Not to mention, Chris used to have a thing for me. Uh, he really, really liked me, so sometimes he would, like, flirt with me. Sometimes he would, like, try to touch me, like, rub my thigh while no one's looking, or he would, like, try and text my phone, little secret little nothings to me on the side, but I pay him no attention. You know, that was just, that's what it was, but... Chris was one of the ones who used to take a liking to me, but I never paid him any uh, mind. So this day we moving into the apartment. I move all my things upstairs. Uh, Chris and Dante, they helped me move my things. Everybody moved their things upstairs. We only started out with one couch, y'all. We had one couch in this, in this two-bedroom apartment. We had one couch. I had a fishbowl, and they had mattresses. Uh, so that's all we had when we moved in there. Me and Tevi stayed in one room. 
Chris, he was he was he actually had a couple girlfriends. Chris had like a girlfriend who stayed up up in the city somewhere. So Chris would stay with us, and when he did, he was still on the couch most of the time. He would be with them girls, and Dante had a room for, by himself. It was pretty cool when we moved in. Everything was good. Me and Tevi was lovey dovey. Tevi didn't give me any indications that he would, you know, he was a bad person. Or I actually was very thankful for, you know, for me moving in with them or staying with them temporarily. Uh, I was very grateful for that opportunity. I wasn't complaining at all. I was very excited actually. Um, you know, I don't, I don't have really much to say about that. So we're gonna fast forward. So now it's like a couple, uh, like a month into us all staying together. He didn't ask me for rent money or anything like that. But I noticed that the other uh, cousin, like I told y'all, Chris would go up the road to his girlfriend's house. So it would just be me, Tevi, and Dante. And Dante, he would kind of get in between me and Tevi, like try to tell Tevi that. I don't know what he would tell Tebby, so it just started getting weird. Like, at first, Tebby was all over me. We were, you know, in quote-unquote love and, you know, very affectionate. And then eventually, Tebby started becoming more distant. Like, they would, uh, for example, like, he would um, leave me home by myself all day. Before, you know, the month, <laughs> the few weeks before, we would all love each other, like, 24-7, you know what I mean? And then the chemistry just started to fade. I feel like because Dante and his other cousins, well, yeah, Dante and his other cousins was getting into his head, and maybe it just wasn't the same. So one day I'm cooking, and I clean the chicken. You know, I take the feathers off, and I soak it in my vinegar and stuff like that. And one day we're cooking, and he comes, Tabby, he comes in the kitchen, and he just, I don't know, he just started to fight with me. He looked at the chicken, and he he seen a couple little feathers on the chicken, and he just went crazy on me. He was just like, oh, you so dirty. Oh, you stay in Brown Sub. Brown Sub is the city that's in Miami from where I'm from. Like I told y'all before, it is the hood. It is. So he was like, you so dirty. You you come from Brown Sub. This how y'all eat y'all chicken, and you dirty, you dirty, and I don't know where it came from, y'all. It just like if he just flipped on me. And, yeah, he just started arguing with me. And I just sat there staring out the kitchen window. I don't know why I let him do that. But I didn't really argue back. And I just remember looking through the kitchen. And I seen Dante, his cousin, was sitting on the couch. And he was just staring at me. I don't know if it was with sympathy or if he was in shock because Tevi had never talked to me like that. But that was like the first incident to where... His uh, demeanor and his attitude started to change toward me uh, from being all happy and lovey-dovey to, you know, pretty much just being serious and non-affectionate with me anymore. After that uh, altercation, I kind of stepped back just a little bit, but I was it was still fresh. I was still having fun. We would all go out. We were all, you know, we have game nights. Dante would invite little girls. He was dating this Spanish girl. Uh, she would come over there and we would all have fun, you know, so I didn't really think much of it I just thought maybe he was in a bad mood and I kept it pushing We just gonna keep fast forward. We just all still living together and One day I Was in remember how I mentioned remember how I mentioned how uh, at first, we were all together 24-7. We were, like, stuck like glue, and then it just started to fade. So one night, he um, he leaves with his cousins, and I'm not sure where they went. I believe they went somewhere that night. So I'm in our room, and I fall asleep. And I remember, you know, being asleep, and it's dark in the room. And I just remember him, like, coming in the room, and he, like, pulled the covers back a little bit from me. And he was just he just woke me up, and he was just like, uh, don't, don't be mad or nothing like that, but... My wife, she's in the other room, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna sleep with her tonight. Say what? Y'all, I'm not lying. He just woke me up, and he was just like, "Yeah, my wife, she in the other room, and she gonna sleep here tonight, and I'm gonna sleep in there with her. You know what I mean? Just don't trip about it. <laughs> I'm not lying to y'all. I give y'all all the tea." And so I'm like, what do you mean your wife? He was just like my wife. And then he just gets up and he walks out of the room and closes it up behind him. And I sit up, I sit up for a little bit and I'm looking, you know how you just ponder? First of all, he didn't tell me he had a wife, y'all. I promise you, he never told me he had a wife. He never told me he had a wife. He never told me he had a wife. So 
I was just like pondering and I was just stuck. I'm like, are you serious? And then at the same time, not only was that a shock, my heart dropped because my heart was broken because it's like, what? So it was like, not only did you shock me, my heart is broken. And then three, it's like, I don't have nowhere to go. If I just get, get up and just pack my stuff, where am I going to go right now? So I was really conflicted with those feelings and I felt kind of stupid. But nonetheless, guess what? If y'all haven't learned anything from watching my channel yet, what have y'all learned about me? I come on here to vent to y'all, to anybody with an open ear, to give y'all a good story time. And I tell y'all my trauma, my past trauma, the things I went through. And so y'all don't be crazy like me and go through these things because, child. And so what I do, I just, I just stayed in the room and I cried, y'all. I stayed in the room and I cried, y'all. Okay, so I'm, I don't remember too much about that night. That was just the second incident. That was just the second incident. So the third incident, we're gonna we're gonna just fast forward. And then, uh, and he was not like, he never like hit me or anything. He was not like a, a physically abusive. He only like he was mildly verbally abusive, which is not good, but he was mildly verbally abusive. Like I said, he was very quiet and laid back. So I would never expect that from him. Um it was just happening so fast. Like I told you, it was just like a month, month and a half in of me staying with him. And it was just crazy. So I remember not all of it was bad. Um that was horrible, but like I told y'all, I stayed. And I'm not sure if this happened before the wife or after the wife, but I'm going to tell this this part of it. He had this aunt called Aggie. We're going to call her Aggie. So Aunt Aggie, again, was one of those aunties. You know how you have that family member where you can go to their house. Aunt Aggie always had like a lot of cookouts and barbecues at her house. So one night, we all go to Aunt Aggie house. And like I told you, they were Bahamians. So they had conch salad and fried conch and all kind of Johnny cakes. They had all kind of good food. His cousins was out there. We had a good time. That was one of the best times I had in my life, even till this day. Even till this day, that was one of the most latest times I had in my life. And we were all just simply outside, pretty much in the front porch in the street, hanging out the whole night. We, we, it was so fun. We were lit. We had so much fun. Chris, the one cousin I told you, Chris, he would always try to back door Tebby and try to talk to me on the side, try to whisper in my ear when nobody was looking or try to text my phone, but I always ignored him. <coughs> His other um, older cousins, like they were older uh, Bahamians, so they would always try to, you know, marry us logically, tell me out me and Tevi need to get married, this, this, and that. You know how older people is. But that night, nonetheless, was so lit. So lit. Um, so lit. We actually had a rental that night. We actually had a rental, one of them bootleg rentals. You know how, well, I don't know if you're familiar with people who rent, like, cars, they're not a rental company, not even like Turo. They just they just collect a bunch of used cars and they rent them out to friends. I had one of those cars. So we was using one of those that night that ended up didn't get paid for because <laughs> Tebby left that car in the parking lot for the man. And he didn't pay that man. But I ain't, I ain't saying nothing, allegedly, because he was just that messy. I had no idea Tebby was a guy like that, but. Anyways, that night we had so much fun. I was drinking. Um, I remember just drinking, drinking, drinking. Tebby was, uh, we were like under this carport in the front yard and sitting in some chairs and I was just drunk. And his older cousin was talking about how me and Tebby should get married, this, this, and that. And I'm just, my head was just spinning, y'all. I'm just sitting on, my head was just spinning, spinning. I was so drunk. I actually, I'm, I never was the type to get up and vomit in front of people. I would, I would get up and leave. So that's what I did. I felt myself. I had to throw up. So I got up and I walked to the gate and I threw up. And he, Tebby got up and he walked me to his aunt's back room. And that's why I slept for the night. I woke up to someone like fingers creeping up my leg. And guess who it was? Dante. The other cousin, y'all. So I guess he, Tebby sent him in there to wake me up. But instead of him just 
shaking me. He had to put his like fingers running up my leg. I felt him in my sleep and I woke up kicking. And when I woke up kicking, he was standing on the end of the bed just looking at me stupid. So yeah, not only did Chris try to talk to me, Dante tried to backdoor me. It was just a mess, child. A mess. It was just too much. And I feel like I'm leaving like a whole lot of details because it was just a lot. A whole lot of, a whole lot of, it was just very overbearing. It was too much. That was one of the good times. So now we're going to keep going to the next event. Um, I'm not sure which time stamp I'm in, how many months in or how many weeks in I'm at at this point. But I told y'all it was getting bad. He would, um. At first, it was all romantic, and I felt like he was a savior. You know, I felt good staying where I was. Um, but that was, like, crumbling. It was dying down. It was getting rusty. Um, it wasn't there anymore. So another uh, instance, I remember that he would, uh, Dante, remember I tell you how Dante would always date this Spanish girl, and she would come over and have fun with us. So she was over there one day with her friends. So she brought her friends over that day. And it was a couple of girls, maybe three or four girls, including herself. At first, they were in the living room with Dante, hanging out, talking, listening to music. Because me and Tebby, we wasn't getting along at this point. The chemistry wasn't there. Every time I was around him, we would argue. I just felt very uncomfortable. I felt like he didn't like me anymore. So pretty much the entire day at this point, I was going through a deep depression. I was staying in the room for like 23, 22, hours, 22, 23 hours of the day. No lie. I didn't eat. I didn't do anything. His cousin, his older cousin, used to have to come in the room sometime and actually make me eat because I shut down mentally. I used to be in the room. So, But I remember this one day, Dante had that Spanish girl over there, and she brought like three or four girls over there. And at first, I heard them in the living room. They were all partying and listening to music, which is cool. But then it got quiet. So I was like, "Why did where did everybody go? Because even though I'm not physically in the living room, I would still keep up with everything through ear and just, you know, just keep tabs on everything that way. But everything just got quiet. So I'm like, that's a little suspicious. That's weird. Um, not only was that suspicious, I told you I was into depression. I don't, I, I wasn't eating. So I had like an extreme headache. I remember I had an extreme headache. So not only was I not eating, I just I just needed to get up, go to the gas station or a corner store and get a painkiller like a pill or and get a little snack and something to drink. I had to force myself to get up and walk across the street. That's what I do. I get out of bed, I put on clothes, I walk through the house, I look to the living room, nobody was there. Everything was just quiet. Everything was just placed how it was. Nothing. It was just like everybody just got up and walked out. So I'm like, okay, maybe they went to the store or something. I um I proceed to walk out of the door and I go across the street to the gas station. I didn't see anybody through the parking lot. You have to pass all of the cars to get to the, the gas station across the street. I didn't see anybody. I go to the gas station, get my little painkiller, snack and a drink. I come back across the street. And when I hit the parking lot, guess what I see, y'all? I don't know if it was just it was just great timing. It was just meant for me to see. It was meant for me to see. So as I'm getting in the parking lot, guess what I see? I see the back seat of one of the cars of the girls opening. And guess who's getting out of the back seat? Tebby and this girl. As I'm walking up, he literally just looks at me. She looks at me and nothing was said. At that point, I told you I was mentally drained. I did not care. I was a little heartbroken, but I did not care. I, I seen both of them getting out of the back seat. I mean, what else was they doing? They was, what else were they doing? I mean, I'm not stupid, so. But I was mentally drained. I literally said nothing. I just went back upstairs. I went back into the room, and I just, sh sh you know, sheltered myself. That's what I, I, I tend to do, and I try to stop doing that even till this day because it's not healthy. But I went in the room, girl, and I sheltered myself because I was just a mess. Okay, it's even draining talking about this, but I, it's good. It's good to talk about it. You know, it's, a, it's you know, it's good to talk about. It. I got a little slight headache, but we're gonna get through this. Um, so after that, I told you I was just depressed, sheltered. I didn't really do anything for weeks at a time. I just stayed in the room. Um, so now we're gonna fast forward, and that distance it didn't it didn't get any closer. It just got farther. Like I don't know. Um, it pretty much it just got worse so he started to treat me even worse um 
I know sometimes he probably was on the phone, probably on the internet, or maybe texting, or because he used to talk to some girls from the Bahamas too. And that's what happened. So let's fast forward till this day. Um, one day I was in the room as I was depressed, sad, whatever, blah. And I heard a voice. It was a, a voice of a girl. And mind you, how I told y'all, even though I was always in the room, I would always keep tabs of what's happening through ear. Um, and so I didn't recognize this voice. It was a voice of a girl. And she had, you know, she had like a, you know, like a, 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 a woman voice. So I get, I get up and I open the door and I go into the living room and it's this tall, slim, Bahamian girl, she had this nice little bob. I'm not going to lie, she was very pretty. And she was just sitting on the couch, and she looked at me, and I looked at her, and she had, like, luggage uh, next to her, maybe, like, two, three big old luggages next to her. And nobody said nothing to me. I just went back in the room and closed the door. Uh, it was Tabby, Chris, uh, the other cousin. All of them was just st sitting out in the living room chilling, and I was in the room. Um, they didn't say nothing to me. I didn't say nothing to them. So apparently this woman, uh, I, I, don't, I don't even want to give her a name. Uh, she don't need a name. So it must be it was like the next day. It was quiet out. Remember I told you how me and Tevi initially started staying in one room together and then he, we started separating and he just started sleeping out or wherever or in the living room. He didn't sleep in the room no more. So this, uh, so the very next day it was quiet, but I know him, but I know Tevi, Dante, Chris, I know him, all of them went to work that morning. So I went out into the living room and she, the girl, she was in there in the living room on her phone. And so I was just like, you know, let me just talk to her because why, why not? So I walk up to her and I sit on the couch next to her and I asked her, I said, I said, so what's your name? And she told me her name, blah, blah, blah. And I asked her where she's from, and she told me she's from the Bahamas. And um, I'm like, so who are you? And she was like, well, I'm Tebby girlfriend. <laughs> what I'm going to say? I ain't lying to y'all. <laughs> she said, I'm Tebby girlfriend. Who are you? And I said, well, I'm Tebby girlfriend. And we was looking at each other, and I was like, well, how are you his girlfriend? If I stay here, she was like, well, he told me that you his ex-girlfriend and you just stay here and this, this and that and this, this and that. And I'm like, oh, really? I say, well, do you know that I've been staying with him since we moved in here? She was like, yeah, but he said this, he said that. And we were pretty much talking. I'm not going to lie. It wasn't a cat fight, but we were pretty much, pretty much talking. And yeah, my heart was broke. And my heart was crushed. And I was, again, going through depression. And, again, I really didn't have anywhere to go. So, at that point, we end the conversation. I go back into my man cave and my hole into the room. And I begin to break down. I start praying. I'm like, I start calling my family. I call my auntie. I'm like, auntie, I need somewhere. I need you to pray for me. <laughs> because I knew she didn't have nowhere for me to sleep. That's so why I called my auntie up. I'm like, auntie, I need you to pray for me. I called my other friend up. She she was a stripper at the time. She stayed down the road. I'm like, friend, I need somewhere to stay. She was like, all right, I'm going to call my mama. Let me call my mama. I'm going to call you back. So I'm just praying that that went through. And she called me back. She was like, no, my mama said she, you, she ain't got no room there or whatever. So I'm like, dang. So I finally called my dad. And I'm like, dad, can I, stay, can I come back home or whatever like that? Me and my dad, we always had been through things ever since I was like a, a, a young teenage girl. Um, I would tell most story times about that. Um, it, it's a couple on my channel already of me being rebellious when I was younger. Crazy story times I got myself into. But he was pretty much like, um, no. And, um, yeah, he pretty much told me no. And he ended up hanging up on me. And, yeah, that was a hard pill to swallow. And, um... So I was pretty much stuck. Either I would have just had to get my things and be homeless or go back to the hotel room, which I didn't really want to do. Um, so I met this. What happened? Oh, so I met back up with my um, a friend that I had before. And I had met back up with my friend. So I told him what was happening. And um, <laughs> he pretty much like you know took a liking to me we got attached like we got we became not attached but we came we 
started talking again, like, you know, texting and talking again. So um, I was telling him what was going on, and he didn't like it or whatever. So he pretty much was just there for me. He was just there throughout the days that was upcoming. Because after that girl entered the house, I was just done for. I was done for. I was going to hurt somebody, so I had to find a way out. Um, so after that day, we talked. She still was in the house. Uh, she didn't. She wasn't rude at all, actually. She wasn't rude. She was pretty cool. Um <laughs> But the fact that she was in the house as his girlfriend when I was his girlfriend, it just was so disrespectful. How disrespectful can you get? It was just like pretty much just saying me, me, like nobody, I, I, I didn't matter pretty much is what, is what I was being shown. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. So she was at the house for a couple of days. Um, Dante and Chris, they would go off with their girls and it was just me in the house with that girl. No lie. Two girlfriends in the house. It was very crazy, uncomfortable. My heart was broken and I just couldn't do that anymore. Y'all, I just couldn't do that anymore. Um, so I called my friend, we're going to call him Kevin. So I called my friend Kevin up and I just couldn't take it no more. I, I had some, okay, this what happened. Tevi, it was Tevi's birthday. So Tevi got dressed really nice him his cousins that girl everybody everybody in the house they all got dressed up and they went to this club um fast forward long story short i'm talking to kevin i'm like kevin get a hotel room because i am i'm leaving tonight pretty much i'm, I'm leaving tonight get let's get a, get me a hotel room and my cousin i had spoke to my cousin and he had agreed to let me stay there until my dad let me back in the house <laughs> pretty much so i had a plan so, Tebby went out that night, him and his cousins, they went to the strip club. It's hours later. I'm waiting. Um, his cousin comes in the house. I'm not sure who came in first, Chris or Dante, but Chris or Dante, they come inside. They come in the house. I'm like, how y'all had, did y'all have fun or whatever? And they tell me they had a good time. They drunk, they tore up. I look around, I don't see Tebby. So, I'm like, where's Tebby? And they was like, I don't know what Tebby at. Like, he was just behind us a couple minutes ago. I don't know what to be at. So, I'm like, hmm, that's strange. So, me, I go down to the parking lot, and I see Tebby. He's drunk, y'all. He's drunk. He's laid out on top of this broke-down car on the hood of it. I'm serious. He's just drunk, laid out on top of this car, and he just, just sleep. And, y'all, he had goals in his mouth. He had... A gold watch on he had a pocket full of money he, and amongst some other things right I didn't take it I was thinking about it I was thinking about it I could have but I didn't take it I should have but I didn't take it so we're gonna fast for a little bit um so I make him get up the, I make him get up I make him get out the uh bit up the uh the, the car I'm like Tabby get up Tabby get up you drunk, man. You out here in the parking lot, sleep on this man's car, get up and come to the park and to the apartment. He get up, he uh stumble into the apartment and you he take off all his jewelry, take off his everything, and he he crashes on the couch, right? So I wait like I wait like an hour to everybody was gone, right? So I called Kevin. So I'm like, Kevin, come get me. So Kevin come get me. We leave. We go um we I made sure the room was straight or whatever for me um, because the next day I was going to my cousin's house, so it really didn't matter. But he took me to the hotel, made sure the hotel was straight and everything. And, um, yeah, that's what we did. So maybe like 30 minutes after that, I knew everybody was asleep. And mind you, I had my own key. I had my own key to the apartment because I moved in with them. So everybody was asleep. The guys downstairs, we stayed on the second floor. The guys downstairs, they were outside playing spades and drinking and do what they do. So they seen me coming up the stairs, and they were like, why is she creeping up the stairs? They were kind of eyeing me, but they didn't say nothing. So my friend Kevin downstairs, he had the car on. I told him, don't cut the car off. Keep the car running. Open the, the car door because I'm going to go get some things, and I'm coming back downstairs. <laughs> So I creep up the stairs. I put my key in softly in the door. I open the door. I hear everybody in there snoring in the living room because everybody drunk from the club. And I go in the, um, the house, y'all, and I see everybody's jewelry on the table. I'm not lying. Allegedly, allegedly, it was two pair of goals, two, like two pair of watches. Uh, I took a 
allegedly I took like three bottles of champagne that was on top of the a refrigerator. Um, what else? I got the PlayStation 4. Um, yeah, among some other things, allegedly, y'all, because guess what? He hurt me. He played with me. He disrespected me in the utmost way possible. And not only that, I needed to escape. I needed to go, you know, I needed some money. So, allegedly, allegedly, I had took all that jewelry and I took all that PlayStation 4 and everything like that. And I piled it on, <laughs> on top of my hands. And I left the key in the door and I walked downstairs. Y'all, I closed the door, but I left the key in the door and I creeped downstairs. And the guy downstairs saw me, so he was laughing. He must be knew what I was up to because he had done seen how they was treating me and everything like that upstairs. So he must be knew what was going on because I just remember him smiling at me. I put everything in the back of Kevin trunk. I closed the door and we take off. And that was my last time physically seeing Teddy. We get to the hotel room. And I'm just relieved. Um, the next morning, Kevin took me to the pawn shop, honey. I pawned, allegedly, <laughs> I pawned the, those goals, those watches, those chains, that PlayStation, everything. Everything was pawned, and I made a good dollar off of it, allegedly. Um, And so I had a good time, you know. And I might go ahead and pick up the story from when I moved with my cousin because that's a whole nother story, y'all. Um, but, yeah, I was relieved. I was still with my cousin. I was good, and I was back with family out of those uh, abusive hands. Um, <laughs> and then, so we're going to fast forward. I never see him physically, so the next morning, I mean, of course, everyone's going to wake up, and they're going to see that all this shit was taken right. And then they're going to see that my shit is gone, and they're going to see that I left the key in the door, so what? That means I did a hijack and I, I escaped, right? So, the next morning, Tebby calls me, of course. And he calls me all kind of B's and H's and O's and all kind of stuff. And telling me how he going to catch me and this, this, and that. And, who child. He just, he just was telling me I'm wrong for taking their stuff, allegedly. And I'm this and that. And, and I and he didn't see nothing wrong with what he was doing and this, this, and that. And, I never physically saw him again, but I did see Dante again. I was coming out of the weed shop one time. <laughs> I was coming out, and he was coming in, and he was pretty excited to see me. And allegedly, I had took his watch and pawned it. So he, he mentioned the watch, but he was cool with me. You know what I mean? He he kind of had a low-key crush on me. So it was all water under the bridge. Uh, I think Tebby got, I honestly think Tebby got deported back to the Bahamas because Tebby, he was a menace to society. Uh, he did work, but he was a menace. I think Tebby got deported, which is why I haven't seen him since I moved out of that apartment. But to God be the glory, I made it out, y'all. I really hope y'all enjoyed that story time. It was crazy. If you enjoyed it, leave a comment down below. Like my video, that would help me grow. I would really appreciate it. And most importantly, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I'm so close to my 1,000 subscribers. I would appreciate it. But until next time, y'all, I love y'all and I am out.